I can probably fix it. I've had a couple of, uh, a couple of thoughts on it, but I've been able to fix those. But um, I'm not sure I would be able to with any of the latest transceivers. It's almost a job of... Uh, Hi, welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a brand new radio called the Ambry AR2520. Now it's a dual band mobile radio. And according to specifications, it outputs 25 watts on both bands. But later in the video, we'll check that out using a power meter. Now this also has the ability to receive air band and it actually has AM, so it should demodulate it okay. But again, we'll check that out later in the video. Now it's quite a small radio and it does come with the usual accessories. So let's just take a quick look in the box and see what it comes with. So first up is a user's manual, which does go into detail about specific features and functions. Now while browsing the manual, I did come across a couple of features that I've never seen before in a radio like this. Now keep watching to find out more. We then of course get the microphone, we then get the main radio itself, and of course we need a power cable. Now the microphone does feel very light, almost a little cheap, and the PTT button does rattle a little, but I guess that wouldn't be a problem when you're transmitting, as you'll just be holding that in place. Now all of the radio's features and functions can be adjusted using the keypad on the microphone, so no need to fiddle with the radio itself if you're driving. Now for those wondering, the keypad is back illuminated, so you can see those buttons easily in the dark. Now the buttons do actually have quite a nice feel to them, that kind of rubberized feel that makes pressing them feel quite comfortable. A radio bracket is included for mounting in your vehicle, along with the required screws and bolts. Now as mentioned before, this radio is quite small, which in my opinion is not actually a bad thing. Now the front panel hosts an RJ45 socket, which is used for the microphone, and it also doubles up as a programming port and a data output port. The push dial on the top left is just for adjusting the volume and turning the radio on and off, which you need to hold that button in for a few seconds. To the right of the display, we have the main function buttons, which help maneuver around the menu system or change frequency. Now, there is no VFO dial, so you can either use the up and down arrow buttons to change frequency or use the keypad on the microphone and direct dial the required frequency. Now, the speaker, which incidentally sounds pretty good, is located on the top in between what looks like part of the chassis, which helps dissipate heat. Now, on the rear, we see a cooling fan, the power input, an SI239 socket to connect to your antenna, and then there's a 3.5 millimeter socket. Now there are some funny quirks about this radio, which I'll talk more about in a moment, but you'd think the 3.5 millimeter socket on the back would be for an external speaker. Well, for me, it didn't work, even after trying a couple of external speakers. So you may then start to think, is this a data port? Well, nope, not to my knowledge. The data port is actually part of the front RJ45 socket. And the manual didn't say anything about this port either, so the mystery continues. With the radio powered on, we can now see the screen. And if you're familiar with a lot of these recent color screen handheld radios coming out of China in the past few months, then you'll think it looks quite familiar. A couple of options within the menu do not work, well, at least for the version of radio that I have. Now these are Bluetooth and Record. Now according to the manual, there should be a TF or micro SD card slot on top of the radio. I guess this is where it can record transmissions and receptions to, but my radio is missing the TF card slot. And yep, I did actually open the radio to see if it was there. Also, the Bluetooth module is missing on mine as well, so there's no Bluetooth connectivity, at least on my version. Two VFOs are present on the screen, and with the dual watch feature, the selected main VFO will take priority. Within the menu settings, you can disable dual display so that only one VFO will show. Now the date and time will then show where the other VFO was. And if you have the GPS version of this radio, then the date and time will automatically set once a GPS lock has been acquired. Now talking about the GPS, there is no external GPS antenna. In fact, it's located just under the top of the front of the radio. The manual mentions the possibility of sending the received GPS data 
out to a computer using a programming cable, so I thought I'd give it a try. Now within the menu, you just enable GPS, and then you need to enable GPS monitor. Now this is the setting to tell the radio to output the raw GPS data to the data port. Now with the programming cable plugged into my computer and the radio, I connected to its virtual COM port with a board speed of 115200, and I was using a Windows application called Putty. Now when I enabled the GPS monitor, I watched the terminal window fill with raw GPS data. Now I can think of a million and one applications for this, especially if we can still use the PTT and mic input on the data port at the same time. I know that when you have the GPS monitor enabled, you cannot use the programming software at the same time. Now let's take a quick listen to the airband and see how well this radio demodulates AM. One zero kilometers on all cloud, to 2,200 feet, temperature 5, dew point minus 1. Well, in my opinion, that's not great. Strong stations seem to get overloaded and the audio goes quite crunchy. Now, is it better than not having airband? Yep. Would I recommend to buy this radio based on airband AM performance? No, I wouldn't. But we never know. A future firmware update may improve that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Stem zero DQW just testing audio. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. M zero DQW testing audio. One, two, three, four, five. Let's now take a look at how much RF output power this radio emits. Now, using my nice high power meter with a 100 watt dummy load attached to the rear, we can see an output of around 17 watts on high power at 435 megahertz. Now, if I switch over to VFO A, where we have a frequency of 145.5, we can see an output power of about 18 watts. So, this is quite a smidge off of that rated 25 watts. Now, I don't normally test low power, but for some reason, I did on this radio. And I was surprised to see that low power on two meters at 145 megahertz was still a whopping 14 watts. However, low power on the 70 centimeter band at 435 megahertz was a more manageable five watts. Okay, so let's take a look at spurious emissions. In other words, does this radio transmit in a million and one places at the same time? With the radio set to 145 megahertz, we see a large peak on the left. Now, this is called the fundamental, the main transmission. Now, I'm not really interested in the power reading as such, as I have a bunch of attenuators in line between the radio and the analyzer. But what we are interested in is that second harmonic and the difference in dB between that fundamental and that second harmonic. Now, here we're seeing around a 46 dB difference, meaning that in most countries, this would be acceptable. However, that third harmonic does appear to be a little larger. Now, up on 435 megahertz, we see the second harmonic around 33 dB down from that fundamental. So not as good as two meters, but at least it's not the same as the fundamental. Now, if anyone has one of these radios and can perform the same tests, then please let me know your results down in the comments below. Now, one last feature to show of this radio is the Roger Bleep setting. Now, I know what you're thinking, but please bear with me. So the Roger Beep setting does actually have a couple of what we know as Roger Bleeps, but you can also change these to send data instead. You can either send a user ID, or you can change it to send your GPS coordinates when you dekey the mic. Now, this is what it sounds like.
Now, I'm not entirely sure what data type this is. I've tried to decode it using some various bits of software, but to no avail. And I don't have another one of these radios to see what effect it has on a listening radio. Now, it does sound like some form of short burst FSK. But again, if anyone knows what this is, then please let us know down in the comments below. To summarize the Ambry AR2520, would I recommend this radio? Well, I probably would actually. If you're just going to be using it as a 2 and 70 mobile radio or even home base, then yes, it's pretty good. I think it's uh, not bad for the price, especially the price actually. Now, at the time of making this video, I did make up the programming cable, but I wasn't able to get the programming software. Now, I have seen a request on the Chirp website for somebody who's actually requested this to be included. So hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll see support for this on Chirp, which of course then makes it extremely easy to program things like repeaters and obviously other predefined memory banks into radios like this. Now, the AM, it was a little bit disappointing, especially if it was strong stations. Never know, maybe a firmware update may improve that in the future, but we'll have to wait and see. Unfortunately, though, at the time of making this video, this radio was not actually listed on the Abbey website, which is a little bit concerning when you get a branded radio like this and it's not even on the manufacturer's site. So we'll just have to wait and see if this is actually an OEM product. We'll always find out when another manufacturer brings out the same radio but with a completely different model name. And I can guarantee that will happen in the near future. We just need to see which company does it first, not mentioning any names, a Retivis. So there we go, guys. That's the radio. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. I'll leave a link where you can buy this from if you want to go check it out or even see what the specifications are in more detail. Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video.